Today's rockets are remarkable collections of human ingenuity that have their roots in the science and technology of the past. They are natural outgrowths of literally thousands of years of experimentation and research on rockets and rocket propulsion. One of the first devices to successfully employ the principles essential to rocket flight was a wooden bird. The writings of Alius Gellius, a Roman, tell a story of a Greek named Archytas who lived in the city of Tarentum, now a part of southern Italy. Somewhere around the year 400 BC, Archytas mystified and amused the citizens of Tarentum by flying a pigeon made of wood. Escaping steam propelled the bird suspended on wires. The pigeon used the action-reaction principle, which was not to be stated as a scientific law until the 17th century. About 300 years after the pigeon, another Greek, hero of Alexandria, invented a similar rocket-like device called an yolipile. It too used the steam as a propulsive gas. Hero mounted a sphere on top of a water kettle. A fire below the kettle turned the water into steam and the gas traveled through pipes to the sphere. Two L-shaped tubes on opposite sides of the sphere allowed the gas to escape, and in doing so gave a thrust to the sphere that caused it to rotate. Just when the first true rockets appeared is unclear. Stories of early rocket-like devices appear sporadically through the historical records of various cultures. Perhaps the first true rockets were accidents. In the first century AD, the Chinese reportedly had a simple form of gunpowder made from saltpeter, sulfur, and charcoal dust. They used the gunpowder mostly for fireworks, in religious and other festive celebrations. To create explosions during religious festivals, they filled bamboo tubes with the mixture and tossed them into fires. Perhaps some of those tubes failed to explode and instead skittered out of the fires propelled by the gases and sparks produced from the burning gunpowder. The Chinese began experimenting with the gunpowder-filled tubes. At some point, they attached bamboo tubes to arrows and launched them with bows. Soon they discovered that these gunpowder tubes could launch themselves just by the power produced from the escaping gas. The true rocket was born. The date reporting the first use of true rockets was in 1232. At this time, the Chinese and the Mongols were at war with each other. During the Battle of Kaiken, the Chinese repelled the Mongol invaders by a barrage of arrows of a flying fire. These fire arrows were a simple form of a solid propellant rocket. A tube kept at one end contained gunpowder. The other end was left open and the tube was attached to a long stick. When the powder ignited, the rapid burning of the powder produced fire, smoke, and gas that escaped out the open end and produced a thrust. 
The stick acted as a simple guidance system that kept the rocket headed in one general direction as it flew through the air. How effective these arrows of a flying fire were as arrows of destruction is not clear, but their psychological effects on the Mongols must have been formidable. Following the Battle of Kaiken, the Mongols produced rockets of their own and may have been responsible for the spread of rockets to Europe. Many records describe rocket experiments throughout the 13th and 15th centuries. In England, a monk named Roger Bacon worked on improved forms of gunpowder that greatly increased the range of rockets. In France, Jean Frossard achieved more accurate flights by launching rockets through tubes. Frossard's idea was the forerunner of the modern bazooka. Jonas de Fontana of Italy designed a surface-running rocket powder torpedo for setting enemy ships on fire. By the 16th century, rockets fell into a time of disuse as weapons of war, though they were still used for fireworks displays. And the German fireworks maker, John Schmidler, invented a step rocket, a multi-staged vehicle for lifting fireworks to higher altitudes. A large skyrocket, first stage, carried a smaller skyrocket, second stage. When the large rocket burned out, the smaller one continued to a higher altitude before showering the sky with glowing cinders. Schmidlep's idea is basic to all rockets today that go into outer space. Nearly all uses of rockets up to this time were for warfare or fireworks, but an interesting old Chinese legend reports the use of rockets as a means of transportation. With the help of many assistants, a lesser known Chinese official named Wahu assembled a rocket-powered flying chair. He had two large kites attached to the chair, and fixed to the kites were 47 fire arrow rockets. On the day of the flight, one who set himself on the chair and gave the command to light the rockets. 47 rocket assistants, each armed with torches, rushed forward to light the fuses. A tremendous roar filled the air, accompanied by billowing clouds of smoke. When the smoke cleared, one who and his flying shell were gone. No one knows for sure what happened to one who, but if the event really did take place, one who and his chair probably did not survive the explosion. Fire arrows were as apt to explode as to fly. Rocketry becomes a science. During the latter part of the 17th century, the great English scientist Sir Isaac Newton, 1642-1727, laid the scientific foundation for modern rocketry. Newton organized his understanding of physical motion into three scientific laws. The laws explain how rockets work and why they are able to work in the vacuum of outer space. Austrian rocket brigades met their match against newly designed artillery pieces. Breech-loading cannon with rifled barrels and exploding warheads were far more effective weapons of war than the best rockets. Once again, the military relegated rocketry 
Two-piece time uses. <laughs>